Before I had, or before I would own up to having anything to do with the church in my 20s, the cross stopped me on my tracks. And it did so through this poem, which I was studying on a language course in Old English. That's what the high crosses of the ancient British church were there for too, to stop us in our tracks. In the centre of the poem, and at this distance I'm not worried whether this is a mathematical middle, there is this line. Christ was on rode. Christ was on the cross. And that arrives with the sort of impact that I've otherwise associated with unexpected revelations about who was really related to whom's in my family. As in the Bible, the earth was shaken by this terrible part of the Easter story, so it shakes whatever our world might be. And then we realise at that moment both the love of God and the generosity involved in God's self-giving in Jesus to be one with the earth's community. As well as the shattering realisation of how our species, then as now, has chosen to respond, as well as what follows from those choices. And then, the readiness of God to pick up the pieces with no thought for vengeance, because the blame game only ever makes things worse. What's just as striking is the participation of all creation, Al Yeshab, in this drama. The tree, which is ripped from its forest home, becomes the unwitting and unwilling participant in the torture of the Creator. At a time when the urgency of hearing the voice of the earth and acknowledging the personhood of the earth and her creatures has never been more urgent, and when this urgency comes about because once we look creation in the eyes, and once we realise we face a who, not an it, everything changes. And it changes because we are human. Words from this poem appear also on the 7th century Ruthwell Cross. They're inscribed there wonderfully in runic characters. But there too we find Jesus not in conflict but in fellowship with the adoring wildlife of the wilderness. In the place without people, the harmony of God and creation becomes apparent. Though we shouldn't imagine we have no place, no job to do in the management of life. We are not stewards of a soulless property, but we are responsible partners with Christ. We are creatures with a place and purpose amongst the other creatures of God's covenant. And Jesus Christ made one with the tree, with the cross, is the key, the way, both to hope and a better life for the world. And if we haven't met him yet in the easy times, perhaps we might notice, after all, when change overtakes us and faith and the communion of creation is revealed as the lifeline for us and for the world that God so loves as we see in the poem. What? the choicest of visions I wish to share, which came as a dream by middle night when we voice bearers lie at rest. It seemed I saw a most wondrous tree borne aloft, wound round by light, the brightest of beams. All was that beacon sprinkled with gold, Gems stood fair at earth's corners there, likewise five shone on the shoulder span.
all there beheld an angel of God. Feire für Fortgeschaft, fair through for making. Indeed, this was no wicked one's gallows, but holy souls beheld it there. Men over molden, people over the earth. And all this great creation, honoured with trappings, shining with joys, decked with gold. Gems had wrapped that forest tree worthily round. Wondrous that victory beam, yet I, stained with sins, with wounds of disgrace. I saw the tree of glory. I saw the tree of glory. Yet through that gold I also clearly saw Erma Argewin, the old fight of the wretched. When first the tree began to bleed on its right side with sorrows most troubled, I feared that fair sight. And yet I saw that doom beacon turn trappings and hues, sometimes with water wet, drenched with bloods flowing, betimes with jewels bedecked. But lying there long while, I beheld Rio Kerrig, Helander's trio. Troubled, I beheld the healer's tree. Until I heard its fair voice, then Best Wood spoke these words. It was long since, I remember it, that I was hewn at Holt's end, sundered from my stem. Stranger fionders, strong enemies seized me there. Worked me for spectacle, the cursed ones lifted me. On shoulders they bore me there, set me high on a hill, fiends enough fastened me. When saw I, of humankind, the Lord. He came with great courage to climb on me, then dared I not against the Lord's word bend or break when I saw earth's fields shake. All those fiends I could have felled, but I stood fast. The young hero stripped himself, he, God Almighty, strong and stout-minded. He mounted high gallows, bold before many, for he would liberate your kind. I shook when that man clasped me. I dared still not bow to earth, fall to earth fields, but had to stand fast. Rude was I reared. I lifted a mighty king. Hirvana Lavert, Lord of the Skies and so I dared not bend. With Dercum Naglum, dark nails, they drove me through. On me those sores may still be seen, the open malice wounds, I dared not scathe anyone. They mocked us both. We two together, all wet with blood I was, poured out from that man's side. After ghost he gave up. Much must I bear upon that hill of fierce fate, when I saw the God of hosts harshly stretched out. Darknesses had wound round with clouds the corpse of the wielder. Bright radiance when a shadow went forth, dark under heaven. And way up all geschafft, all Creation wept. Weop al geschafft. All creation wept. Christ was on Rode. Christ 
was on the cross. But there came eager ones from afar to that noble one. I beheld all of that. Sore was I with sorrows distressed, yet I bent to men's hands with great zeal willing. They took their almighty God, lifted him from that grim torment. Those warriors abandoned me, standing all blood-drenched, all wounded with arrows. They laid there, the limb-weary one stood at his body's head. Beheld they there heaven's Lord, and he himself rested there, worn from that great strife. Then they worked him an earth house, bold in the slayer's sight, carved it from bright stone, set inside the wielder of victories. Then they sang him a sorrow song, sad in the eventide, when they would go again with grief from that great Lord. He rested there in small company, but we there lamenting a good while stood in our places after the warrior's cry went up. Corpse grew cold, fair life-dwelling, then someone felled us all to earth. That was a dreadful place. Deep in a pit one delved us. Yet there, Lord's thanes, friends, learned of me, adorned me with silver and gold. Now I command you, beloved follower of mine, that you, seeing this, tell to others. Discover with words that it is glory's beam, which Almighty God suffered upon for your manifold sins, and for the ancient ill deeds of Adam. Death. He tasted there, yet God rose again by his great might, a help unto you. He then rose to heaven, and again sets out hither into this middle earth, seeking your kind. On doomsday the Lord himself, almighty God, and with him his angels, when he will deem, he holds power of doom. He asks before multitudes where that one is, who for God's name would gladly taste bitter death, as before he on the beam did. So therefore dreshten as namen death as wolde, Bitterers on Bergen, Swahi er on them beme did. May he be friend to me, who here on earth earlier died, on that gallows tree for our sins. When their wielder came, Almighty God, where his homeland was. <laughs> 